Zach Osterman uh, joining us now from the Indy Star. Zach, how are you, sir? Hey, how are you doing? Good. I was just uh, running over the impressive resume of tomorrow's uh, opponent for Indiana with the wins that Purdue has over uh, teams like Arizona, Tennessee, Alabama, uh, Illinois, Marquette, and Wisconsin. They have the most impressive resume probably of any team in the country right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't argue with you. I mean, and, and I think I'm looking at their, their Kim Palm, um, number one strength of schedule in the country, <laughs> you know, number 10 non-conference. Um, and this, I mean, this obviously, listen, you know, Purdue's in this weird place where ultimately there's an extent to which nothing matters until they get to March because of what happened last season. This isn't even a comment on like the five banners and the no bet like that. Leave that to one side. It's the, it's what happened last year. It's how good Purdue was last year only for it to end that way. There is an extent to which, you know, all this just kind of has to wait until, you know, until the NCAA tournament, but you even go back to last season, you know, and you think about they. I think they won that that tournament out in um, out in Portland. They beat Marquette at home. You know, they, I mean, I'm looking at their last season schedule. They had at one point in the non conference four straight Ken Palm top twenty wins. This year, you talk about all the, the games that uh, that they've won. You know, again, I think was the where were they with the neutral site games? It was the was it Maui? They were in Maui, weren't they? Yeah. Um, beat Gonzaga, beat Tennessee, beat Marquette, beat Alabama on a neutral floor, beat Arizona and Indianapolis. I mean, they've every time this team's challenged itself, it's it's stepped up. And again, you know, number one strength of schedule in the country. So there's kind of no uh, there's no getting around how good Purdue is, frankly. And normally in this game, you you kind of throw all that out. It, it, it would matter. Uh, I'm not sure that's the case this year. Uh, Indiana has, they're still seem to be trying to find themselves, trying to, the roster is, or, or the lineup, uh, the issues there with injuries. Um, and so they're, they're, they're really just not set even themselves as they come into this game, uh, which I, maybe sometimes could be good. I don't know, but uh it's just it's going to be a very very uphill uh, ask for this team who lost to Purdue already by the biggest home margin since the 30s. Uh, so what can this team do differently? This Indiana team to give themselves a, a shot? Yeah, I mean it is tough, and I think Indiana, you know, did kind of get pulled into the occasion of that Purdue game a little bit. Um, you know they. They started the game well and then just just kind of, you know, collapsed. I think one of the things they really struggled with was, you know, last season. And a lot of this was the veteran presence of, you know, the likes of Trace Jackson Davis and Race Thompson. But they were so good at kind of isolating Zach Eady within Purdue's offense. And, and to be fair, I think that was also just a weakness that Purdue had last year that it may not so much this year. Uh, I think Lance Jones has been really good for them. Obviously, Fletcher Lawyer is shooting the ball a lot better. I mean, he's shooting 51% in Big Ten play from three. Um, you know, Braden Smith was good last year, but, I, I mean, he's just gone up to a, a remarkable level um, as both a shooter and a, and a distributor this season. Um, so I think, they're just, I think they're just a better team, frankly. Um but I think that, you know, if, if you're talking about what can make Indiana competitive in this game, I think that the first thing is keeping Kalel Ware out of foul trouble. And that was something, again, that, that Trace Jackson Davis was really good at. Um, just kind of knowing when to let Zach Eady go, you know, and, and just sort of, you know, recognizing when when he lost the battle and when to let Eady just kind of have two points and sort of live to fight another day. I actually thought Ware bothered Eady at times in, in that game. Um, in Bloomington, just because I don't think Edie is used to having people in his face. You know, I, I don't think he's, I don't think he is used to um, players or, or defenders that are as 
you know, that can match his length, that can match, you know, kind of his his reach and just kind of get in his airspace, frankly. Um, but obviously Ware got in foul trouble and we don't know if he's going to play tomorrow because of the, the knee injury he, sus- he sustained late in the uh, uh, Ohio State game. Sorry, I'm, I was losing the, the thread there for a second. So it's going to be difficult. I mean, you know, you're going to need to shoot well. You're probably going to need Purdue to not shoot particularly well. Um, you know, if, if anything, I think this Purdue team is probably – actually improved in recent weeks. Like when Indiana played them in Bloomington, they were having some turnover issues, Uh, you know, some, you know, kind of some up and down performances defensively, but they've gotten a lot better in both of those categories lately. Um, You know, I mean, they've only had one turn, one, one game of single game turnover rate higher than 16.7% in the last six. Um, and if you look at opponents, you know, kind of they had a run there. And some of this was, you know, they were playing Alabama, they were playing Arizona, but they had a run there of, of games where, you know, uh, Nebraska put up 1.28 points per possession against them, Illinois 1.15, but only three times in their last six games as an opponent, you know, even averaged one point per possession against them. So they've gotten a lot better defensively as well. I, it's, I mean, it really is a very tall task for Indiana. And I think in, in that way, you know, there's an extent to which I think it just kind of becomes a free hit a little bit. I know it's a rivalry game, so people may not want to hear that, but I think it becomes a, a bit of a, it becomes one of those games that you just sort of look at and, and you think to yourself, um, you know, anything Indiana can get out of this, anything at all will be, will be worthwhile. Yeah. On uh, one side, we're talking about a team who is, Definitely trying to uh, get get a monkey off of its back in several ways. Purdue, try, uh, a Final Four that has not happened since 1980. Uh, they're chasing a national championship that uh, uh, they have never won, and uh, they hear about that because they have been uh, uh, uber successful uh, in the Big Ten Conference. But yet, that has not parlayed itself into national play. Indiana has just trying to find itself back to being Indiana. And so there's multiple storylines. And for Indiana, they struggled back and they they beat a, a, an Ohio State team that is just not very good. But it seems like it might have given them um, some confidence. But you mentioned some of the things that's going to make it difficult, whether or not they have Kalel Ware, who is a, a, a major part of this team. And if they don't, that has to change how you attack a team like Purdue because just because they have Zach Eady that nobody else has. It, it, this is a whole different um, attack that you have to plan. And now they've got to do it without – well, possibly, if they have to do it without their best – uh, or one of, if not their best player, uh, how do how does how do you go into that mentally if you're Indiana? I think I mean you know I think you you just I think first of all you you can't be swept up in the occasion again the way that it felt a little bit like Indiana was you know at, at least to some extent when when these two teams played in Bloomington. I also just think and I said this not necessarily specifically about the Purdue game, but I just. It was, it was kind of in, in, I think, in something I wrote after the Ohio State game. Indiana's just in a place where it, I think it's just – Indiana's just got to kind of try to stack good days right now, and I don't think it needs to worry about – when I say it doesn't need to worry about results, I understand everybody wants to see wins. I understand everybody wants – everybody, including, you know, just everyone in that program will want to try and find some way back in the NCAA tournament conversation. Um but I just think that, frankly, Indiana's in a place where it's just got to get, you know, it's it, it's it's got to get itself, you know, on a track of improvement toward consistency, consistency of results. I love the phrase that um, Anthony Leal used on on Tuesday night. He said it was another opportunity to learn about winning. And I think that, you know, if, if we all kind of accept that, Indiana's season kind of is where it is at this point, and we reframe it around basically just asking how does Indiana get better from here. Um, I think that the, you know, the the idea of just trying to build, you know, more consistent performances, better habits, yada yada yada, 
all that stuff to me is is really what what matters. And I think that's that's you know it's, it's probably going to be the hardest thing to do when you're playing one of the top two or three teams in the country, um, you know, and and you are um, you are going on the road against a rival, and you know what that environment's going to be like, and all that stuff. But the, you know, the more you can, if you're Indiana, remove yourself from the the occasion of a rivalry game and, and just focus on, you know, kind of attacking the problem one possession at a time, which is one of those things that, you know, you, you sort of, um, that's a cliche, but you, you literally just saw Indiana do that against Ohio state down 18 points on the road. You know, they didn't come back into that game because they hit five straight threes or something. You know, they, they had to, I mean, I, I, I use this old um, cliche on Tuesday night, too. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? That's how Indiana got back into that game. And I think that's just kind of how Indiana, as much as it can, needs to kind of just, you know, frame itself for the next few weeks and just kind of see where things wind up. And, yeah, Saturday night, that's it's probably going to be a loss one way or another. Purdue's just too good. But um, if you can just keep – you know, keep attacking kind of your problems, your weaknesses, your inconsistencies, you know, and, and not maybe not getting swept up in the result too much, especially in a game like this. I think it'll be better for you long term. Yeah. And looking forward, one of the things that has become a topic of conversation, mostly among fans, is uh, Anthony Leal starting. And it's just been, I don't even, uh, I, 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 d- I disagree with that, for, first of all, but it's not has anything to do with Anthony. I think that he's been their only uh, point production off of the bench. He has been – he brings a spark that they don't have, and the way that things are set up, you, you couldn't bring – A, him and Gabe Cops do not play the same position, and I don't think people are understanding that, that they need him for that. Although, while Gabe has not been uh, very assertive – for himself offensively, he has still impacted the offense. Uh, the, the the numbers have shown that Indiana was very efficient with him running that offense, uh, and that is what it's more about. And then you bring in an Anthony Leo, and if he's having success, great. That's good for him. That's good for Indiana. But that's uh, just I, I don't. I guess it's because they're looking. Fans are looking for something positive to hang their hat on, and and that's a, and Anthony's a great story, but I, I don't see how that changes the dynamics of of how this team attacks uh, their their opponents. No, I mean I think I mean there's a, there's a couple pieces to this. First of all, you're right. It's it's not a perfect positional comparison. You know. Second of all, um, I'd point out that. Leal and Cups played the same number of minutes against Ohio State. You want to go back to, I guess, the the first Anthony Leal game kind of in this stretch. Um, you know, Leal played 22 minutes off the bench against Iowa. Cups only played 11 minutes in that game. Now, Cups was playing off the bench in that game, too, because Xavier Johnson started. But Leal only played one minute fewer than McKenzie and Baco in that game. So, you know, Mike Woodson has never been shy about, you know, when he finds a guy that's playing well. Um, you know, within the context of a game, when he finds maybe a lineup that works, you know, I mean, as he did Tuesday night when he, you know, that, that, that lineup that had, what was it? It was Leal, um, Renew, Trey Galloway. I mean, those three, Galloway and Renew played the entire half. And I think Leal came in about five or six minutes into the half and never came out again. So the point is, you know, Woodson is very much one of those coaches that is, is not, standing on ceremony. If a guy's playing well off the bench, he's going to stay on the floor. You know, the other thing I would say too, is, you know, we literally just heard Mike Woodson yesterday talking about how he needs more of a bench than what he's got. And he needs to, you know, get more confidence in guys like Caleb Banks and CJ Gunn, that they can come in and impact the game and figure out ways to put them in positions to, to make positive contributions when they, um, um, when they when they come into you know when they come into uh whether it's a, a you know maybe kind of a planned rotation like a you know just just like the way we see Mike Woodson roll through his rotation kind of once every half just to, in the first half to make sure guys stay 
um, stay fresh or it's, you know, when Indiana needs a change of pace or, or some impact or whatever. And my point is, if you take every guy that plays well off the bench and you shove him into the starting lineup, then at some point you, you're weakening your bench too. And, um, you know, I think Anthony Leal has earned all the minutes he's been getting. You know, he's played – I think he'd played – 50 some odd minutes up to the Wisconsin game up to and including the Wisconsin game this season. And he's played 78 minutes in the last four games. So again, it's not like Mike Woodson is, is shy about putting him on the floor when he feels Leal is giving him good minutes and good possessions and so forth. And I think his, his role should continue to expand, but number one, Indiana kind of needs some presence off the bench right now. Number two, as you point out, no, Anthony Leal and Gabe Cups don't really play the same position. And number three, um, it's not like coming off the bench has stunted Anthony Leal's opportunities lately. Like I said, he played he played the same number of minutes um, Tuesday night as Cups played. He said played the same number of minutes Kalel Ware played. Only six players played more than seven minutes in the game, and he was one of them. So. It's not like it's it's shutting down his opportunities. 